According to the Public Policy Institute of California, in the next 30 years, California will experience a significant increase in its population of retirement age residents from 3.6 million to 8.9 million. This video shows a snapshot of a building code that was initiated through a Senate bill and which then made its way through the California Building Standards Commission. But this is merely a view of the sequence as there are various activities at both the state and at the local level prior to the legal administration of these building codes. So every state in this country follow a similar course of action. The only difference is that every state could be in different code cycles, meaning different time frames that they adopt building codes. But more on the building code adoption process on a later video, so stay with me. This measure asks the Department of Housing and Community Development during the next triennial building standards rulemaking cycle to develop and propose for adoption by the California Building Standards Commissions building standards requiring fall prevention features to be in place. These features could include things like one ground level entry, wide interior doors, blocking in bathrooms to allow future grab bar installation, reachable electric controls, and to facilitate aging in place. I'll turn item 7C back over to the commission and entertain a motion. I think it would be beneficial for us to receive comments from building officials, from architects, from building inspectors, and, and we test this, uh, let the rubber hit the road a little Thank bit. You. But the vote is unanimous and the motion is carried. And with Senate Bill 280 approved by the state, the new aging in place design and fall prevention code requirements were created. And these requirements will be part of the new 2022 California Residential Code that goes in effect on January 1st of 2023. And the provisions will affect all new one and two family dwellings, including accessory dwelling units that are submitted for building permits on or after January 1st of next year. But as we review these requirements, just keep in mind that this is the first version of these provisions that were approved by the California Building Standards Commission. So we can expect to see some updates too, as some clarification may still be needed. And now let us take a look at these requirements. Water closets, showers, bathtubs, and combination bathtub showers will be required to have wall reinforcement for future grab bars in at least one bathroom that is located on the entry level of the dwelling. The wall reinforcement must be no less than 2 by 8 lumber or equivalent. And the reinforcement must be located between 32 and 39 and a quarter inches above finished floor. Moving on, in water closet areas, reinforcement for grab bars will need to be installed on both sidewalls of the toilet. Or on one sidewall and on the rear wall. In showers, reinforcement installed must be continuous where the wall framing is provided. And at bathtub and combination tub showers, reinforcement must be continuous and the reinforcement must be continuous on the rear wall. In addition to the reinforcement required at the rear wall, reinforcement for a lower grab bar is also required with the bottom edge located no more than 6 inches above the bathtub rim. Exception 1 is applicable where toilets are not placed adjacent to sidewalls capable of accommodating a grab bar. And in this scenario, the exception then requires the bathroom to have means of installing floor-mounted, fold-away, or similar alternative grab bar reinforcement. Exception 2 exempts the installation of wall reinforcement for prefabricated shower enclosures and bathtub wall panels that have factory installed grab bars or that have factory installed reinforcement. Exemptions 3 and 4 also exempt wall reinforcement for shower and bathtub enclosures that do not allow for the installation of reinforcement and or grab bars. And in this scenario, reinforcement for the installation of floor mounted grab bars or an alternate method will be required. And exception 5, reinforcement of floors is not required for bathtubs and water closets installed on concrete slab floors. I also want to reiterate that the bathroom reinforcement requirements we so far reviewed are required only at the entry level of a dwelling and the new code defines the entry level as the floor or level of the dwelling unit on which an entry is located. 
and it is intended that where there are no bathrooms located on the entry level of a dwelling, then at least one bathroom on the second or third floor, if it applies, will need to have the reinforcement installed. Moving on, information and or drawings that identify the location of the grab bar reinforcement will need to be documented in the operation and maintenance manual that is required by the California Green Building Code for new dwellings. Electrical receptacle outlets, switches, and controls, including controls for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning that are intended to be used by occupants, will now need to be located no more than 48 inches measured from the top of the outlet box to finish floor and not less than 15 inches measured from the bottom of the outlet box to the finished floor. But there are two exceptions to the height requirements to be aware of which are for dedicated receptacle outlets such as refrigerator, stove, furnace or dryer, floor receptacle outlets, controls mounted on ceiling fans and ceiling lights, and controls located on appliances are exempt from these requirements. And exception 2 applies to receptacle outlets that are required by the California Electrical Code, located on a wall space where the distance between the finished floor and a built-in feature above the finished floor, such as a window, is less than 15 inches. Doorbell buttons, when they are installed, will need to be 48 inches maximum above the exterior floor or landing to the top of the doorbell assembly. However, when doorbell buttons integrated with other features, such as cameras, are required to be installed above 48 inches, then a standard doorbell button or control will also need to be installed at 48 inches above the exterior floor or landing. The new residential code will also require, effective July 1st of 2024, that at least one bathroom and one bedroom on the entry level of a dwelling will need a doorway with a net clear opening of not less than 32 inches, measured with the door positioned at a 90 degree angle from the closed position. In the case of a two or three story dwelling, the door width requirement must be met on the second or third floor if applicable of the dwelling, if a bathroom or bedroom is not located on the entry level to the dwelling. Well, this concludes this video. And please remember that these requirements are California amendments, therefore are only applicable in California. So be sure to submit your building permit before the end of the year if you want to design and build to the current codes.